I'm here at the Fort Chiswell Flying J. The interstate that you see in the background is a combination of Interstate 77 and 81. We're in one of those rare places of the American interstate system where I just realized I'm pulling into the wrong space. Charging ports on the other side. Where uh, two interstates combine. And for a short space of roadway, they add additional lanes and the two interstates become one as a result of the geography. And then a little bit further on, Interstate 77 splits back off and starts heading north. Interstate 81 continues heading east-west through the state of Virginia. And uh, makes for a really good location for electric vehicle chargers. In fact, right over there is a Circle K. They have uh, chargers that got put in before these. Let's see, is it going to do the Auto Charge Plus? Payment has been authorized. Auto Charge Plus work. They charge 49 cents per kilowatt hour. We'll check to see what this one charges. I'm on a free GM plan, so I'm not going to be charged anything. Um, but I'm assuming this station is going to cost more. But it's just a terrific location for EV charging because the heavy corridor of the combination of the two interstates just right out there. So this is one of the original 25 that Pilot Flying J installed in 2023. It's a really good location and apparently they've got ginormous, ginormous windshield wipers. Holy smokes, these things are huge. All right. <laughs> So that's the thing, apparently. Um, very windy day, a little bit chilly. I'm going to do a site visit video of this location. Uh, I also need to charge. I posted up here with 9% battery, and uh, that will afford us a really clean charging curve to see what we get. Now, these dispensers are able to put out 350 kilowatts. My car can only go up to 155, so we're not going to fully load test them but at least we'll get some indication what the charging curve looks like. So when I review EV charging sites from now on, I'm using the new Coulomb site review model, uh, which was developed by Eric over several years of his EV charging. Eric runs the new Coulomb YouTube channel. He was kind enough to allow me to use his model. What I've done is I've printed out the scoring. It's two-sided laminated and I use an ex expo marker in order to uh, mark the scores. I'm going to walk around now and see how the site does. Here's the vital statistics for the location. It's at a Flying J in Fort Chiswell, Virginia, directly off the combination of Interstate 81 and 77. The plug share location will link, be linked down below in the description. There's four charging stalls supplied by two dual handle 350 kilowatt Delta dispensers with CCS handles. It's an EVgo Extend location, meaning that if you're a member of EVgo, the benefits that you receive are not extended to these locations because the hardware is owned by Pilot Flying J. Pilot Flying J sets the pricing and also what member benefits are applicable to their customers. However, because of the partnership with General Motors, uh, it's been announced that there will be discounted charging rates. We're still waiting for the specifics on that. And also the ability to reserve stalls in route, very similar to the Mercedes-Benz charging hub network. <clears throat> they have Auto Charge Plus, native from EVgo, which is different from the SAE standard of 1511.8. And the cost for charging is $0.57 cents per kilowatt hour. I want to compare and contrast that a little bit to the location directly across the interstate at the Circle K. The Circle K has two ABB Terra 184s um, dual handled. And as you can see, there are also uh, constructed stalls for an additional four stalls, making a total of, I'm sorry, a, an additional four chargers or eight additional stalls. So right now at Circle K, they have four stalls and they have the ability to add an additional eight for a total of 12 stalls. That's pretty significant. However, 
there are not as many amenities over at the Circle K. The News Coulomb Site Review Model is a collection of 50 points in five categories, 10 points per category, access, amenity, concentration, location, and speed. Starting off with access, the site scores nine points. The one that it doesn't get is pull-through stalls. Uh, there's only pull-in. The cable management is brand new, and I have seen on these Delta dispensers that they do wear over time, but right now is a brand new site and the cable management is fine. There is also signage in order to enforce uh, charging, and it's also in a nice section of the property that will not likely be iced. It's in, uh, directly in front of the Wendy's. The property has both a Wendy's and a Denny's, and uh, this is in the uh, corner of the property directly in front of the Wendy's. I would call it near to the entrance of the site because it's not that big of a property, at least in the front, and you could easily walk either to the uh, inside of the Wendy's or the inside of the uh, main travel center. The main travel center is open 24-7, 365, and um, of course we're immediately off the interstate because it's directly behind us. There are point of sale options and the ability to do plug and charge. The last option I kind of struggled on because it says sufficient stalls for site popularity. I gave it a green check mark even though there are only four stalls because I was there on a Saturday afternoon and I was the only one charging. So with that index, I'm going to say that it's fine right now. For amenities, we do not have a canopy as other Pilot Flying J locations have. It seems about either half or a third of the Pilot Flying Js have those nice canopies. The other half do not. There is overhead lighting. Um, one was existing and then they installed another one in order to ensure that there was lighting over the uh, chargers. The bathrooms are open 24-7, 365. Uh, trash cans. And as was seen in the um, opening, there is a ginormous... Uh, squeegee. There's four of them. There's, I don't know why they got the big ones uh, that are used for truckers. Maybe that those were the only ones that they had available or something. I should mention that this is a full service truck stop as well. So not only is it a travel plaza for people going up and down the interstate, it also is a fuel depot for long haul truckers and a place where they can stop for the night. I think it's either 20 or $30, something like that for a truck to park at night. And then you can come in um, and do your laundry, uh, get yourself a shower, get yourself a meal and um, go back and then sleep in your truck. They have Wi-Fi out in the uh, parking area for the truckers. So it's a pretty nice place for the truckers to come, but it is a full service truck stop. As far as dining options, there's two. Uh, there is a Wendy's fast food uh, restaurant, which is open during normal Wendy's hours, but there's also a Denny's. And I asked the attendant at Denny's, it is open 24 7, 365, the same as the travel center. You can go in and get a meal at the Denny's any time of the day. There are also many local attractions. The Hungry Mother State Park is not too far. Shenandoah Valley State Park is not too far. And I think most importantly, there's an exit to the Blue Ridge Parkway, only about a mile away. So plenty of natural beauty and scenic locations to go through uh, close to this location. So I guess a check mark for that. Concentrations, I consider it to be appropriate for the venue. As I said, I was the only one there charging on that day. Uh, I spent about 40 minutes charging and uh, no one else came through during the time that I was there. But the number of chargers appropriate for the route, I'm gonna say no, because as I said, directly behind these chargers is a combination of Interstate 81 and 77 in a pretty congested corridor. And eventually these chargers, after they become popular, are gonna start to be overrun, including the ones directly across the interstate at the Circle K. And as you saw, the Circle K is ready for the influx of more congestion with the additional stall built out. At this location, there are no um, additional stalls uh, with the conduit laid in order to expand. In fact, I've seen at all the Pilot Flying J's, they don't seem to be 
uh, prepping any additional expansion. So what they're installing now is likely what they'll have for a long time. The number of chargers appropriate for the region. Uh, there is not a very high adoption of EVs in Western Virginia, so I'm giving it a yes. And there are additional um, EVgo Pilot Flying J locations. Um, not quite 20 miles. You have to go to um, White Pine, um, Tennessee, in order to get one, or Harrisburg, Virginia. Um, so there are within uh, a distance in order to uh, make it on a single charge. Not quite 20 miles, uh, but I gave it a check mark. As far as the location, it gets check marks for all of the um, locations except for uh, being more than 50 miles from the nearest public fast charger because there is chargers directly across the interstate. Um, and it's not in an area with no other public jet fast chargers for the same reason as well. Now let's talk speed. The transformer is 750 kVA, which equates to about 600 kilowatts. So the throughput, I stopped at 500 because the next step up is one megawatt and it definitely doesn't go to mo one megawatt. I did give one megawatt to the last location, which had six stalls. This one only has four stalls um, with two 350 kilowatt dispensers. So that's 700 kilowatts and the 750 kVA is 600 kilowatts. So the maximum throughput is 600. Giving the site total points, 37 out of 50. So there you have it, site number 25 in the Pilot Flying J portfolio completed at the tail end of 2023 immediately off the combination of interstates 81 and 77 in Fort Chiswell, Virginia. Two 350 kilowatt dispensers competing up against Circle K just on the other side of the interstate. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah.